for joining me today. I'm Kayla and this is At Home with Kayla Price and I have my friend Archie over here and he is just my little buddy who is right now checking out the kitchen floor to see if I've dropped any food that he could eat. Maybe, you know, a steak or something such as that he would love. So, if you hear <laughs> metal rattling, that would be that would be Archie reminding me that he wants to eat, even though it's not his dinner time. So anyway, back to business. I want to say thank you for joining me today. If you are new, I would love for you to be a subscriber. If you're a returning viewer, thank you for being back with me. As you know, I put out one video a week, usually on Sunday. It is usually about fashion or beauty or homekeeping or any of the millions of topics that are relevant to us in our everyday lives. So mostly fashion and beauty, but pretty much whatever seems germane for the day. So in today's video, I wanted to talk to y'all about how to curate the perfect wardrobe. And that may seem a little daunting or even impossible. I mean, probably most of us do not have unlimited budgets or unlimited space to keep said perfect wardrobe. But I did want to point out some key factors to keep in mind. And these are factors that you can even use to clean out your wardrobe, to assess what you need in your wardrobe, and just give you, anyway, some rules of thumb and particularly some wisdom from my mom. She always had um, smart things to teach my sister and me and I'm so glad that she did. There are lessons that will stick for, with me forever throughout my life and I look forward to passing them on to future generations. So, let me begin by talking about what is a perfect wardrobe. Well, I will guarantee you what I would tell you what is perfect for me, probably not what will be perfect for you. So you're gonna have to think about that for yourself. What I would tell you to do in order to start figuring out what would, would be the perfect wardrobe, you know, pretty much for me, the end result for all of us is we wanna be able to walk into our wardrobe, find an outfit that fits perfectly and we feel good about wearing so that no matter what the activities are that we normally do in the course of our day, we're prepared for it. We've got the clothes, we've got the underpinnings, we've got the shoes, the belt, the purse, whatever it may be so that when we walk out the door, we feel good, confident, and that we look the best we can. So that's our goal. But how do we get there? Well, the first thing you need to do is think about what are the main activities that you do within your normal week. So for me, I work in an office job, and so I need professional clothes. Now, I am not an attorney going to court, anything like that, so I don't need a three-piece suit or a jacket every day. Um, I'm not a groundskeeper, so I don't need a casual outfit you know, set of clothes to wear to work. I just need nice, clean dresses and dress pants that I can wear to my job. The other thing I do is my life outside of work casual. For me, it's casual. I don't go to a lot of clubs. I don't go to a lot of, you know, places that require evening attire. I only have one thing a year right now that I do that requires something fancy. So, um, so I don't need a lot of that. Now, I don't get rid of my shoes and purses that are evening clothes every year. Those are my basics that I keep and I might get a new dress every year to wear to the one thing that I do go to. So I keep my work outfits, wardrobe, I keep my casual wardrobe. I keep a very, very limited and small 
evening attire wardrobe. And then depending on what your lifestyle is, if for your day job, they're not really clothes to wear to church, then you'll want to have your church outfits. If you have a hobby that requires a certain kind of clothing, such as being a ballroom dancer or playing a sports league, you know, baseball or something, then you've got to have there again, a separate attire for those activities as well. And again, you need the accessories, you need them clean, you need them to fit, you need them mended, you just need them ready to go when you need them. So, try to figure out what are the big segments in your life. Now, you can never be prepared for everything. You know, if somebody were to call me tomorrow and say, let's go rock climbing, a, I would say no because I don't have a rock climb, but B, I don't have the clothes for that. I don't have the shoes for that. I don't have the gear. So, you know, that's sort of a different thing. So, think about the main things that you do. So, for me, office environment, casual. I do keep a bit of what my mom called old clothes for digging in the yard, for cleaning out a rent house, for cleaning out my own house, for those grimy jobs that no one's really gonna see me doing and I don't want to ruin my regular clothes that I wear out in the public. So, that's it for me. Then you wanna figure out from there what is the quantity of said outfits that work best for you. For me, I work five business days a week, so I need at least five business appropriate outfits. I would prefer at least 10 and then that way if one set's dirty or I don't have time over the weekend to wash them or to get to the dry cleaner, then I can still go a second week and not have to worry about wearing dirty clothes. But it's all up to you. But those are kind of more of a minimum. But again, you know, you can have five bottoms and 10 tops and make two weeks of outfits out of them. Um, lots of things you can do. It doesn't have to be this dress can only be this dress. This dress can be a dress with a jacket over it or a sweater over it to switch it up a little bit. Where I think modern day we get into a problem is we want one wardrobe that works for everything. So then that's when you see midriffs in the office and you see, you know, tight fitting blue jeans at church and you see dresses at the ball field and you know, I think that it has not been passed down generally, generationally like my mom taught me and my sister to have a work outfit, a work wardrobe, to have your casual wardrobe. When we came in from school or from work, she would say, change out of your nice clothes, put on your casual clothes. And that was a smart advice. It prolonged our nice clothes. We didn't have to clean them as often. We didn't risk ruining them. And our casual clothes are probably cheaper, easier to maintain and wash, and less risk of actually ruining them. Or if we do ruin them, we've lost less, if that makes sense. So for me, my minimum, which I'm a clothes horse, so this is not what I have, but I, my minimum would be the five nice work outfits, two to three church outfits, which probably would be the same as my five nice work outfits. Two to three outfits for if we were to go to a very nice restaurant in Dallas. Um, five casual outfits. Actually, that would probably be more like, well, five would work because I repeat a lot during the week because we just come home. And so I wear like during the summer shorts and a t-shirt often and I might put on the same shorts and t-shirt the next day after work. So. Five would actually work. And then you're gonna have things like sweaters and belts and shoes and handbags. And some of those are very transferable and some of them aren't. So once a year I go to a fancy evening event and I don't wear that dress any other time. I usually, because I only wear it one year, I usually like to get a new dress each year um, just because it's not like you know, 
I haven't had anywhere else to wear it, so I hate to wear the same thing over and over, but it's fine, you know, maybe. I have recycled, so. Um, but shoes and evening bags, evening shoes, evening handbags, they're easy to recycle, and if you go with like a metallic, like gold or silver or bronze, then they're gonna be real easy to go with everything. You don't have to worry about colors and that sort of deal, but anyway. Figure out what kind of, you know, different wardrobes you need for different activities, and then what do you think is reasonable within that. Then from what you decide, all those outfits need to be clean, mended, and fit you. If you grow, you need to go through there, get rid of the things that no longer fit. If you shrink, same thing. Don't necessarily hang on to things thinking if I gain 10 pounds or lose 10 pounds because by the time you do, you may not want to wear those items again. You may want a reward for gaining or losing or you may want something that's in, more in style or you may just be tired of what you have. So think about that. That's one way to keep your closet clean and get rid of items and I know I am guilty if friends and family are watching I know I know but you know these are good tips and I will employ them um, if you have too few cut clothes you're gonna get frustrated because you're not gonna have the options that you really need to make it through your week and I can just say from my own experience I love the concept that's really hot right now of the 10 item wardrobe or the capsule wardrobe or the minimum wardrobe. But for me, I am very visual. I love clothes. If I had to get up every day and wear the same thing over and over, I don't think I'd want to get up. It would not inspire me. So that's where I like to have lots to choose from depending on the weather and how I feel and what am I doing that day and just you know give me some options so that I can have some creativity in my day that may be the only creative thing I get to do that day and um, also with too much you can't have so much that you cannot find an outfit and that is also equally as bad a problem as having too few items. So I, I'm in the too much and I do have to weed out, but a lot of things that are in my wardrobe are things that I'm either tired of right now or no longer fit me. So it'll be easy to do, I just have to take the time. And what I'm doing right now, which isn't necessarily how to have the perfect wardrobe, but just my little technique, I've lined up like dresses, I love dresses. I've lined up all my dresses on one side of my closet and I am just taking one, wearing it, taking one, wearing it. If it doesn't fit, instead of putting it back in my closet, it's going in another room so that I can box it up and take it on to someone else. That's an easy way because right now I don't just have a day to clean out my closet. It's just, all I need is an extra five minutes just in case something doesn't fit. So. That's a tip that might help you if you suffer from a stuffed closet such as myself. Just remember, it really is better to have fewer outfits, not just items, but outfits that actually look good on you, you feel confident in, that fit you well, and that you know you're gonna want to wear. Sometimes I think we find a good price or a good brand or, something that's really cute, but it's not really the sort of thing we're gonna reach for. So if with all things being equal, would I wear this dress or that dress, if it's always gonna be this dress you reach for, then you don't even need to buy this one or own this one, if that makes any sense. So try to make sure everything in your closet <laughs> would be approved by Marie Kondo. It brings you joy. That is really a big key because I think there's probably a lot of things in my closet that don't necessarily bring me joy. And although they may fit and look okay, they're not bringing me joy. I need to send them on packing. Um, also feel good, you know, some things aren't comfortable. You know, I, I've got to really wear, if I try on a cute dress, I tried on a cute dress this morning and it, it was cute and it fit, but it just felt like 
I was in a straight jacket. You know, it the fabric and the cut just was very, it, it didn't feel good. So I'm not gonna wear it. Might as well send it on back. I am looking at notes in case you wonder what I'm doing looking down. These are also good items to keep in mind when you're buying clothes so that you don't buy things that you later regret and you don't even wear them. You don't even take the tags off of them. Also, why, why do we keep outfits that may not fit us? Why do we keep outfits for the what if? You know, what if I get invited to go skydiving? This is the perfect jumpsuit to wear. Or what if I do gain weight or lose weight? Um, there is no reason to keep those things. So I do wanna show you a few outfits, but first I want to drink some water out of my pretty pink Lark bottle. And I think Archie wants to eat or go to the bathroom, so I'll be right back. Okay, so first up, I wanna give you some examples of versatility and wardrobe. So I've already told you for me, my, um, wardrobes I need to cover would be professional working office, casual, every now and then, something very dressy, every now and then, something very, very old clothes. So when it comes to purses, one purse might work for all your wardrobes, but it might not. So I just pulled a few random purses to share with you and thought I would show you what I was talking about as far as what would work with what wardrobe. So this is a cute little bejeweled evening bag and it is teensy tiny. Not much will fit in it. This quite clearly is going to be something that I will carry once a year to my fancy event that I go to. Um, I might be able to wear it to a really nice date night, um, you know, where you're going to a really nice restaurant. It could be quite cute with a little outfit. But this is not going to be casual, it's not going to be work, unless my work happens to be the fancy evening event and it's not gonna be old clothes worthy. So this is reserved for a very small segment of my um, clothing wardrobe needs. But this, for example, I love this little purse. It is so cute, just a little clutch, kind of um, definitely casual looking, but still nice looking. You know, it's got leather trim. I got it several years ago at Mark and Graham had my then initials in it. Well, there's still the initials I use here, but it's just a really cute little purse. I love this purse if we're gonna go out to dinner, just kind of casual, or that's probably mostly what I would wear it for. I could wear it to work, but probably like more on a casual day, probably not because it's not gonna go with most of the clothes that I would be wearing at work. So it's just more of a casual going out purse. Um, not really a purse I would take shopping since it doesn't have handles. So that would be that one. Uh, I love a good basket bag. If you watch often, you know. So this is a cute little Spartina purse. Could it work for casual? Yes. Could it work for work? Uh, for the work I do, probably because it's an office and it's not like an attorney's office or a downtown, you know, New York or Dallas kind of office. So it could work. It could work for going out casually. Would I take this out to Dallas on a date night? No, because to me, it's a lot more of a daytime kind of purse than a nighttime kind of purse, but it's a cute purse and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not, not gonna be something I would carry in the winter. It wouldn't probably go with anything I would wear to a funeral. It could go with something I would wear to church. Um, so that would be that one. This is a very similar purse also by Spartina, but it's all leather. This purse I could wear to work, casual, it could look cute with a 
church outfit or a funeral outfit. I would not wear it to an evening event with a sequin dress. It might go, depending on what I was wearing, with a outfit that I would wear to a nice evening restaurant. Um, so it has a lot of versatility, really. I wouldn't carry it when I was doing dirty jobs like cleaning house, but usually you don't need a person cleaning house. So, you know, it's a good purse. Got a lot of versatility to it. This is the purse I've been carrying today. It is an, a Talbot's purse that I've had for a long time. I'm doing a volunteer activity today downtown, um, helping with our 4th of July concert and fireworks. And I just needed something that's easy to throw on my shoulders that would carry a bunch of junk because I had a uh, suntan lotion and a bottle of water, stuff like that in it. So it's a great purse. It's casual, so it's great for the ball field or running around town or running errands. It might work for my office job, but it wouldn't be a dressy day outfit at the office job. You know, again, like the straw bag, it would not be something that would work for a downtown Dallas, you know, job in a professional office. Um, and it too is more a uh, summery since it is a linen and leather kind of purse. So fabrics do make a difference. You know, a satin purse is probably going to be best left for an evening bag. A, you know, leather purse is a good year round. Like a good black leather purse is usually going to be a good year round. This is actually not leather. This is cork and it's supposed to be more environmentally friendly. And I can't remember the name of this. Oh, it is. Oh, I don't remember. So this bag is called BB Bark, but I can't remember the brand. I think it's LaFleur or something like that. But anyway, this is a good purse that you can wear to the office probably and it's got you know a little removable long handle if that's a problem you know um it could go with a lot of things and it it to me it looks leather and would work in the place of leather so i could dress it up dress it down wear it in the winter wear it in the summer wear it in the rain just all sorts of things so this is the most versatile of all of these bags Yes, so keep that in mind if you only want a couple of bags in your house. I have too many of those as well, but um, look for something very, very versatile that works with all your different wardrobes. But of course, if you're a ballroom dancer, you're gonna need some of these and this is probably not gonna work. But if you're a competition ballroom dancer, you probably just want a big bag. It all depends. I don't know. <laughs> Have to think through that you'll need to think through that and um, clothing wise and i didn't pull a lot of clothes but like this little cotton casual dress i think this is francis valentine it would work on a casual day at my office um but it mostly would work for just a casual lifestyle you know running around doing errands eating out that sort of deal this is a style of um blouse that I think I talked to you about maybe in the last video. It's by Spartina449. It's a silk blouse and the um, design is called Cora Blouse and I love this blouse because I find it to be very, very versatile. These blouses, they come out with them pretty often in different patterns. They're awfully thin so you do need to wear something underneath them pretty much. Although this one being a dark color might not be as important. I don't know. I'll have to test it out. But to me, these blouses can look cute with, you know, a dress skirt or a pair of dress slacks, appropriate for the office. They would look cute under jackets. They also look cute with a pair of jeans if you want to run around town and go out in them. Um, they could be not 
like they would not work for cleaning the house. I wouldn't want to wear a silk blouse to clean the house. And it wouldn't work if I wanted to go out to a fancy, smancy, you know, sequiny kind of evening. But if I was going to a really nice, you know, business dinner or it would work, you know, depending on how I, what I wore on bottom and how I accessorized. So this one I would consider very versatile because technically I could even leave it out, wear it more as a tunic, put it over some cute little white shorts for the summer, maybe, you know, with some espadrilles would be cute. So look for things, if you want fewer things, look for things that can go double duty. This is a jacket that I've had for a while from Talbots and this is perfect work attire for me, but it also, if I like to go out, well, my battery died, sorry about that. So this would look cute if I was wanting to wear it out with maybe a black tank top underneath it, a pair of black jeans, maybe even a little black wedge would be cute with it. So it could get a couple of, um, different uses in my wardrobe. The only thing about going out is, you know, you don't want something that you wear to work to get ruined and then you still want to wear it to work. So I don't go out to places usually that I have to worry about that, but that would be something with my wardrobe I wanted to consider at all times. And this is a little, a little short jacket that I thought was so cute with Veronica beard and the reason I wanted to show it to you you know you're starting to see was it the 90s or maybe late 80s early 90s when you'd wear walking shorts in style so I'm starting to see and this even came with walking shorts that matched it but not for me but um it would be cute with like some little white walking shorts for casual you know days shopping or whatever but it also is very work appropriate especially for the summer so that is just some versatile pieces now of course a ball gown isn't going to be appropriate for work if you wear skirt suits or pants suits to work every day you're probably not going to wear those in your casual life although maybe the pants you could put with a more casual sweater and it would still work you know look for things like that if you want double duty you know with shoes these are the shoes I have on right now they are bionics because my feet hurt me a lot and um, it's summer so these are cute and go with a lot of things these would probably not be appropriate in the courtroom or in some you know, professional work environments, and they're great casual shoes. They can look good with dresses, look good with pants, and look good with shorts or jeans. So they are more middle of the road, but I'm not gonna wear them to clean the flower beds out or to, you know, run around house, cleaning house. I might be able to wear them to church with maybe a looser kind of, you know, we called them prairie dresses back when I was young, but I think they're calling them granny chic or something these days. So think about your footwear too. Evening shoes are going to be usually metallic or um, a fabric. Usually, usually those are not going to be appropriate for daytime. Of course, espadrilles are often fabric or leather. Um, metallics, metallics are interesting because of course old school, you don't wear metallics during the daytime. Metallics are left for evening, but that's no longer the case. You're seeing casual shoes that are metallic, casual purses that are metallic. Uh, you're seeing day dresses that are made with some shimmer in them, tops or jackets, you know, business suit jackets with shimmer in them. So it gets real hard to disseminate between the wardrobes since fabrics don't tend to be specific to a purpose anymore. Designs, cuts, 
buttons, like all of that can be very confusing to a person if, especially if their, you know, clothing isn't their thing. They just wear what's poked out at them and they're happy. So I get that it can be hard to have the perfect wardrobe, but if you would just figure out what works, work, what works best for you. No one else can tell you what will work best for you. And like I said, 10 item wardrobe, I think it's a really, really good concept, especially if you have fewer different clothing needs within your world. Um, it seems like several of the ladies who uh, really are proponents of that uh, capsule wardrobe, that sort of thing, it is ladies who uh, may not work outside the home every single day. So people who either work inside their house or, you know, take care of their family for their job, whatever it may be, that isn't going to probably require the pantsuits and the dress suits and the high heels and some of the stuff that people who work out in an office may have to have in their wardrobe. So there is no right or wrong for anybody but you. You have to determine what's right for you and what's wrong for you. And the last thing that I want to mention and the best way to have the perfect wardrobe for you is to make sure that every outfit in your closet is something you're gonna feel comfortable and confident when you wear it outside your house. So if it's something you're not real sure about, that is your answer. Don't buy it or send it on out of your closet if you're not sure because chances are you're not going to reach for it. It's not going to be something you're comfortable in or that you want to wear. So to recap what I went over, you need to decide what kind of activities within your life are the big ones that you normally need to have covered with outfits. You then need to determine how many of each of those activities need how many outfits, like how many days and different outfits do you need to cover. Then you need to see what you have in your closet that will work for those needs and get rid of the things that aren't fitting that need or don't fit you properly or are not in good repair. Send them packing. Then from there, you want to go ahead and look into your accessories, make sure you have what you need and get rid of the things that you don't, any spares and excesses. And you want to make sure that every outfit you have brings you joy. And I keep saying outfit because black pants for me is pretty much a staple. I could probably find 10 to 40 different things to wear on top with a pair of black pants. So for me, if I buy a new pair of black pants, I don't have to worry about the outfit that they'll be worn in. However, if I were to buy a pair of avocado green dress slacks, I would need to be buying a blouse to wear with them or a sweater to wear with them because not everything in my wardrobe is gonna go with them. Now, I might be able to wear a black sweater and black shoes, but then it would be nice if I had a scarf or a necklace or something that kind of brought it all together. So that's where you actually have an outfit is once you have things that look like they go together, they're not just separate pieces. And I will say something that I tend to be bad about is to buy a piece not an outfit and then I have the piece and never wear it because an outfit doesn't come to mind. I do love the secret or the technique or the tip of when you have on an outfit you like take a picture of it and then hang that picture in your closet or put it in a file in your phone so that real quickly when you're in a hurry you can say oh, that outfit would work it's clean I know where it is whatever it may be. So that is a great technique to have and 
the other technique I wanted to give you if you are cleaning out your closet. I never have enough time to clean out my closet. So what I've decided to do is put all my dresses in a row on one side of my closet. And every day, like these are all summer dresses, every day pick one, put it on, decide I'm going to wear it to work. If it doesn't fit, I don't like it, I don't feel good in it, go ahead and move it out. Put it in a box. Get ready to move it on out of this house. Don't even hang it back up then go to the next dress. If the next dress fits, wear it. If it doesn't, same thing with it, go to the third dress. So that when I hang things back, I hang them at the back. So I've gone through my entire set of dresses before I even think about buying something new or say I don't have anything to wear. Same thing with pants. You could do it with your pants or your tops. Just work through them all and if you have a lot of casuals that you aren't gonna be wearing to work, you can do it at night too. Put your shorts in a row or your jeans in a row and just work through them as you normally get dressed each day. So that is it for me for the day. Remember, you always want to feel good and confident in your clothes and curate a wardrobe that will promote that. And it's not gonna be a static activity because we all gain a few pounds, lose a few pounds, the seasons change, our life changes and what our needs are change. So this is an ongoing process. So you're gonna wanna keep curating, keep moving things out and moving new things in, but happy hunting in the meantime. So I will see you next week. If you have any tips for me and other viewers, please leave them below. I would love to know how you curate your word wardrobe and what for you makes the perfect wardrobe. Until next weekend, have a great week and I will see you back then. Bye.